welcome to the Hellenic Center. My name is Stamos Fafalios. I'm chairman of the executive board, and we're very pleased to have you here with us tonight. This is the first big celebration of the 25th anniversary of the center. We have uh, a year of programs, and tonight we're opening with our first major event. So now I switch hats, and I'm speaking to you now as uh, Atopos CBC. The CBC stands for Contemporary Visual Culture. We are a Greek uh, cultural organization based in Athens, so in Metaxurgio. And we are also celebrating our 15th anniversary this year since we've been working together. As a cultural organization, we create exhibitions, which so far have first been shown in Athens, and then we've been invited to take them abroad. The first exhibition we uh, created was called RIP, Paper Fashion, and it took place at the Benaiki Museum in Athens in 2007. And since then, we have been invited to take it um, around Europe, uh, to Luxembourg, Antwerp, Zurich, Copenhagen. A small version of it went down to Melbourne, and this is the first time we're showing it in London. So we are very happy to be in London, very grateful to the Hennig Center, who are the main sponsors of this exhibition. It's a collection of disposable paper dresses, American. Um, this was uh, a work in progress after the 2004 exhibition in Athens of uh, the horses that took place with the Olympics at the Benaiki Museum again. It was cleats and folds from ancient Greece to modern day fashion, which Vasilis Zidianakis, with whom I have uh, Autopos, was uh, taking part, and um, he was the, the uh, curator. Um, and this was the next chapter. We wanted to do something of art and technology in fashion. Autopos is uh, concerned primarily with the human body and its adornment in all forms of it. And this is what we enjoy exploring. So while we were exploring um, uh, the use of paper in clothing, we came, the, the younger members of the team came across these disposable or throwaway paper dresses, which were very fashionable in America between, for two years, between 1967 to 1969. It was a fad that swept America, eventually came to Europe, but it was over in two years. And that was because the hippie movement, which was in full swing then, suddenly became environmentally conscious and they um, uh, stopped buying or using paper clothing because of the amount of trees it was destroying to produce these dresses. These dresses were designed primarily to be worn once and thrown away. They came in three sizes, small, medium, and large. You bought them in packages, which you can see here in the exhibition, and uh, the, the, the girls, the young ladies wore them, cut them as short as they wanted to, and the bits of paper that was left over, they turned into a belt or whatever. They had fun, and then they threw them away. At the same time, uh, NASA, was looking for a paper-like fabric that the astronauts could wear when they were going to on their space missions. And they wanted something like paper, but stronger than paper. And that was when the Dupont in Paris was experimenting. They came up with Tyvek. Tyvek is a paper-like fabric, which is, um, you will use it now. It's used for these um, advertising uh, campaigns. It's a plastic paper, but strong. So it's. We have a lovely story to tell. And as we were doing our research, we discovered that in Japan and China, they were wearing paper clothes in the 19th and even 18th century. There was um, a, a, a lack of uh, raw materials, and the poor people turned to, to make clothes with whatever they could find, and some people uh, used paper. Others uh, used paper for clothing when they were, for religious reasons, for monks when they left to go over all their worldly possessions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we have collected all this, and the collection's been growing since 2007. So this is the first time we're showing it um, in its entirety tonight. Also, it just happens that Athens uh, was designated by UNESCO um, as the world city of the book from April last year until April this year. 
Atopos is taking part in this celebration in Athens uh, with, with a pro another project called Fluffy Library. And we have uh, given over our premises and we've opened up our library to this creature uh, made out of fluffy um, fabric that devours books. And we've created an environment where you can go and look through our books, lounge, lie around, take your friends and spend a very happy afternoon. We've, we've converted the whole top floor into a sort of fluffy fun land. Here, we have uh, we brought our project from Greece here in a different form. We are showing, emphasis, we're emphasizing our pieces that have text on. So this exhibition is, that's why this exhibition is called Text Me Paper Fashion. So when the, the, the paper dress fad started with um, Scott Manufacturing Paper Company, who wanted to advertise their new household products, tablecloths, napkins, toilet paper, etc., etc. So you bought them in bulk, and there was a, a, a voucher on the back. You collected the vouchers, you sent in a dollar, and got a gift. The gift that they received was a paper dress made from the same paper as their products. Before they realized it, they had already sent out over 500,000 items of this dress, and they realized that there was a market. So very soon, they, um, people began producing these dresses, and the very first ones, in fact, are these here, and there are two. The op art dress, which is black and white, and the bandana. The first designs they used were um, symbols of America. The bandana from the cowboy bandana, and the op art, because the Metropolitan Museum of uh, Art had just had um, a big exhibition on op art. So that, that was the two cultural themes at the time. And after that, people began using these dresses because of their shape. They were a perfect canvas for artists. And we've got Harry, like Harry Gordon, which is one of the key dresses in this exhibition, because um, uh, Ginsburg wrote this famous poem, Uptown New York, which he chose to have printed on this dress first before it was published. And we have this in the front, etc., um, etc. Et and as quickly as it started, the whole fad ended in 1969. Um, the, but uh, one item worth noting is when you go around the table is the kimono in the middle of the table. That is my favorite piece. It's a star piece because it's made from pages. It's recycled paper. And the um, Japanese had used old account books and they had torn out the pages, joined them, and then sewn them into a kimono. Now, in Japan, when you were, big, when you were uh, learning how to sew kimonos, apprentices produced hingatas. They're called hingatas. Just like here in England, uh, apprentice carpenters produced miniature versions of chest of drawers or chairs when they're learning how to make things. Here they made small kimonos, but what's unusual with this kimono is its, its full size. So we're not sure what it was for. It's wearable um, and it's very, very beautiful in the middle of the table. Also, there are dresses that were used for presidential campaigns. They were used for advertising. So all the young um, ladies who are supporting Nixon, Bobby Kennedy, Trudeau, would wear these dresses, stand behind Nixon and go, Nixon, you can see photographs of them there. And they were used for advertising a Baby Ruth and Whiskey, Time Magazine, George Romney, etc., etc. Do come and see it. It's a fun exhibition. It's a very happy exhibition. Whoever sees this collection, um, uh, go away with a good feeling good. Around the top of the room, I didn't tell you, uh, dresses from the collection. All these are period um, 1967, 69, 69. So to think these were made to be worn once and thrown away, these are already 60 years old. The exhibition opens tomorrow, the 16th of January, and it's on until the 24th of February. It's open most days of the week. And every Wednesday, uh, between seven and nine o'clock in the evening, Wednesday's late night, and on every Wednesday at 7 o'clock, um, I will be giving a conducted tour in either Greek or English of the whole collection. Thank you very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I am Agatha Kalisperis, the director of the Hellenic Center, and I'm really delighted to welcome you all here this evening and to celebrate together the year of our 25th anniversary. We celebrated with music last Friday at our Vasilobita evening. We are celebrating today with this major exhibition and we'll continue the celebrations over the year with lectures, exhibitions, concerts, and many more. Members of the Hellenic Center's executive board, who had seen this collection at the Benaki Museum in 2007, decided to invite Atopos organization, the owner of the collection, to show it in London. We are grateful to the chairman, Costas Kleanthus, and the members of the Hellenic Community Trust Council who embraced this unusual proposal and provided the finance to make it possible. Thanks also go to the other sponsors. The exhibition is unlike any others we had here over the years. The connection with Hellenism is quite strong. It is owned by a Greek organization and it is the biggest collection in the world. Apart from the exhibition at the Benaki, the collection has been shown in many other European countries and for the first time now in the United Kingdom. Um, as you see, this is a fun and colorful exhibition, but it is also an important and serious exhibition. This is the complete study and research on the use of paper and paper-like material in costumes over the centuries. The original idea and research started by Vasilis Zidianakis, and then the collection grew over the years. There are paper garments from the 19th century from China. I think it's the middle one, that one, the white one there is 19th century China. Paper dressers from contemporary designers, but the biggest collection are the paper dresses during the two years in the 1960s, when it was the craze in America to have disposable clothes, and they were in England as well, disposable underwear, as I remember. Uh, the book um, there inside the shop is the most comprehensive book in the history of paper garments up to now. A big thank you goes to the Atopos team, Vasilis, Stamos, Katerina, Christina, and Fotini, for months of preparation and for spending the last five days and nights installing this exhibition. Later this month and in February, there will be two lectures related to the exhibition, so hopefully you'll be able to attend. Also, every Wednesday evening, there will be guided tours at 7 o'clock. Stamos Fafalios, the curator and exhibition designer, will say a few words in a second. Uh, just before that, as you all know, or most of you know, I have to deal with uh, some um, practical matters about the fire exits, one is there and one is the other side of the room, uh, straightforward. And to let you know that the reception will start upstairs after Stamos uh, says a few words in about uh, five, ten minutes. Um, no drinks or food are allowed in the Great Hall, but the exhibition will stay open until about nine this evening and it will continue until the 24th of February. So tell all your friends what they a uh, colorful and uh, unusual exhibition is here. Uh, please do not touch the exhibits, but do touch a dress that is outside. I don't know if you saw it's a dress outside opposite the clock room, and uh, do touch it and to, to feel the, uh, you know, to feel the, the paper. Um, so that's all from me. Let's welcome Stamos, who is the curator and the <laughs> designer. Agathi, thank you very much for those very kind words. There are only a few left for me to say. You said everything. <laughs> no, you, I don't know much. <laughs> what I would like to say is, first of all, thank you very much to the Hellenic Center for having invited us to bring this uh, exhibition's collection here. It's the first time it's being shown in London, and we are honored to be part of the 25th anniversary celebrations of the Hellenic Center. I can hardly believe 25 years have gone past, just as I can hardly believe 15 years have gone past of the founding of um, Atopos, 16 in fact. Uh, this was the first exhibition. The idea was Vasilis's. 
after the Pitikosis exhibition of the Olympic Games in 2004, when we were working on a, um, an idea of um, art and technology in fashion. Artopos is primarily inter in, interested in the human figure, the, body, the human figure, and its adornment. And we were researching an, uh, a chapter on paper, and the youngsters in Athens telephoned me in London and said, we've come across these uh, paper dresses which were worn in, made in America, worn to be thrown away after one time. Do you know anything about them? Well, being much older, I did know about them. And we tried finding a few. Uh, we didn't have the budget then to borrow them from museums. So very quietly, we began collecting and collecting and collecting. We, hadn't, we were very secret about it. And we managed to put this collection together in two years. And we had our first show at the Benaiki in 2007 called Rip Paper Fashion. After the success of that exhibition, we were invited to take the exhibition to Mudam, Luxembourg, Antwerp, Zurich, we've been to Copenhagen, Bologna, and a small version of it to Melbourne. And this is the first time it's in London, and we're thrilled to be at it. Oh, Weiblingen as well. Oh, yes, at Weiblingen. Thank you. And this is the first time it's in London, and we're very pleased to be in this super space. Um, a very dear friend of um, mine, and Anthony's, if he's here, Sir Howard Hodgkin, when he first came to this space, he said this is one of the best kept secrets in London, this exhibition space. So we've been here for the past four days. We thank Agathi and all the, your office, your team here. We've been looked after royally. We've been here for four days installing this show. Um, I can go on talking about it for hours because every piece has a story. Um, the most important thing I think about this particular show is that Atopos has taken part in the celebrations in Athens this year, or in last year and up to April this year. Athens was designated by UNESCO the city of the book. <clears throat> uh, in Athens, um, we have our headquarters in the Metaxurio area, and we have a library with how many, th how many books? Three or four thousand, you know, th three or three thousand books. So we decided to offer our library to the um, uh, um, municipality of Athens to use in its celebration of books, and we've turned the top floor of Atopos into a fluffy library and um, Antigone has, uh, created, um, has transformed the top floor into a fluffy wonderland with Fluffy the horse. And you can go and you can look through our library, you can read our books, lounge, meet your friends, stay there. And it's proved, being, actually it's proved an enormous success. So we decided to give an emphasis on the text with this exhibition. That's why on the central table, everything on the central table is to do with text, the, the written word. And it starts off with um, Allen Ginsberg's famous poem, Uptown New York, and there's a recording of it if you listen to it through the headphones. Allen Ginsberg chose to put his poem on the dress before it was actually published. And that's by Harry Gordon, who designed that dress and the Bob Dylan um, and he designed those dresses as posters so that they're not thrown away. It's called the poster dress, that series, because the first ones were disposable and they were thrown away after being worn once. Then the, um, the various artists got hold of them and began creating works of art on them. Um, you have the uh, presidential campaign dresses and all the um, young ladies behind Nixon, there's a photograph there, wore the dresses and would shout, Nixon, Nixon, Nixon. The same with the Kennedy, and then they were used for advertising, Butterfinger, the super dress after Andy Warhol. There is the Yellow Pages dress and the newspaper. In fact, they were the first, amongst the first, they used ready-made printed pages, and they're called the Yellow Pages, a newspaper, the, la the Apollo landing on the moon, and another page uh, in the, I think it's the dress in the box. It's the day the colonels were overthrown in Greece and the political prisoners were released. That's also printed on there. Um, here we have, and, and then, we, then during our research, we discovered that they were wearing paper garments in China and Japan. So we went to Japan and we found these paper garments, all, these, all this section on this corner 
is made from paper, shredded paper from old account books, which you can see here in these boxes. And all the boxes that have an old account book in, they're all made from shredded paper. They would shred the paper, twist it, and then use the yarn to knit and create these undergarments, which the, um, the samurai would wear under their armor, or some people would wear them under their silk kimonos so that the perspiration would not come through. Um, enough, enjoy it. Sorry, these here are by uh, Miyaki, um, who, um, this Miyaki with whom we have worked before. Um, he was so impressed with our catalog, which is the only um, book out on this subject. He was so impressed, he gave it to his team and he said, read it and create something inspired by it. And they came up with these, uh, there are five here, we've got about 12 of them. They fold flat, believe it or not. And when you lift them up and arrange them, they become these dresses. And he donated them to us, to Atopos. So it's a unique collection. They've been photographed once uh, in Athens, and they're here. This raincoat here is 19th century. It's made from kamiko. It's another way of making paper. You pulp the paper down, and then you pr uh, um, press it into paper. It's this color because the persimmon powder um, from the, sorry, powder from the persimmon juice waterproofs it. And I've, this is something I believe, we know, I don't know if you'll find it. Do you know these raincoats they wear in New Zealand, in Australia, the drizzler, what they call drizzly, um, the raincoats they wear with the capes, they're the same color. And I wouldn't be surprised if they saw them in Japan and produce the raincoats they still wear in um, Australia. And this is by Stratis, uh, this is a, um, a Greek artist who um, I, 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 can't, I, don't, I can't understand his patience. He sits above a piece of paper with a scalpel and he removes the blanks, the, the voids, leaving this intricate lace work of the thinnest paper you can imagine. This is a, work of, a recent work of his, a double shirt, and in one of those boxes there, there's a wonderful pair of uh, underpants in gold paper. Um, and what else? That's it. Please enjoy it. Ask whatever questions you want. Every Wednesday we give a guided tour um, from s at seven o'clock. And um, upstairs there's the, wine. The there's upstairs. a reception upstairs. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, my. I forgot. I want to thank our sponsors, primarily the Hellenic Center and the Hellenic Community Trust, the main sponsors of the exhibition. Um, uh, Condorusis, SLA, Transport, and the Anonymous, Anonymai. And Agathi, thank you very much again. And I personally thank the Atopos team, Vasili, Katerina, Christina, um, for your dedicated work. Thank you very, very much. And those in Athens, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Stan.